Uh, this is a five-minute call from the Green Party. I call Kevin Haig. Well, thank you, Mr Speaker, and, and thank you to that last speaker, Jamie Lee Ross, for, for listing the government's uh, package addressing Auckland housing affordability issues. I guess that ultimately the arbiter of whether or not the government's response to housing affordability in Auckland has been adequate or not will be whether or not people can afford houses. And I notice in the television news this evening that the average house price in Auckland has had a new high of $938,000. I think that at this point, um, perhaps half-time in the contest, most spectators would probably conclude that the government's not winning, that actually at this point its package of housing measures has not been adequate. Maybe this bright line test will be the thing that actually starts to turn that around. But right now, uh, the, that, that average house price is far beyond the resources of the vast majority of New Zealanders who need homes. And that's because, Mr Speaker, it's a housing bubble in which the, the market value of, of housing assets uh, greatly outstrips their real or tangible value. Uh, and these dynamics are, and particularly the, uh, the use of mark-to-market valuation and essentially unlimited supply of credit are the classic dynamics that drive further expansion of asset bubbles. Now, Mr Speaker, uh, Professor Jane Kelsey most recently has written about what she calls the fire economy, uh, an economy based on finance, insurance and real estate, which is a pretty good example, pretty good uh, depiction of what much of the New Zealand economy is about. But she's not the only person who has who has commented on that fact, on the fact that the speculative economy, if you like, Mr Speaker, uh, has absolutely dwarfed the real economy in this country. And of course, that directly harms many New Zealanders, and it also uh, creates a very substantial risk to the overall New Zealand economy, putting our country at risk. Now, a capital gains tax, uh, capital gains tax is certainly not a panacea for asset bubbles, Mr Speaker. But the lack of a capital gains tax uh, uh, certainly takes that fire economy and throws petrol on it. Because what we effectively say to speculators, what this government says to speculators is, uh, please speculate in housing. Because you not only get these massive windfall pro profits, but you also get them tax-free, unlike uh, any income that you might get from investment in the real economy, in productive uh, industry, or in your labour. So, Mr Speaker, National's problem is that it has railed against capital gains taxes, uh, and it probably also believes uh, the, the economic theory that actually governments cannot deflate asset bubbles. So it's got those problems, but stacked up against that is the, is the real politic of voters and its voters being unable to afford houses in Auckland. It has to be seen to be doing something. And Mr Speaker, that is why we are now experiencing this half-hearted measure. Um, Jamie Lee Ross and other government speakers have said that it's not a capital gains tax, and indeed it comes nowhere close to the kind of capital gains tax that the Green Party has advocated, that Treasury has advocated, that all of the experts have advocated. Instead, it's a half-hearted measure. According to Treasury, we should expect that this will yield something in the order of $5 million in increased revenue. Well, Mr Speaker, $5 million is better than nothing. And, and the Green Party will be supporting this, this bill again tonight. But, Mr Speaker, let's put that $5 million and stack it up against all of that untaxed uh, windfall profit that so many speculators have realised on the Auckland housing market. And I, I echo the comment of my colleague Eugenie Sage. Once again, this is a government responding to a real serious problem with nothing more than gesture, sir.